In this video, I want to show you how you can render literally anything in Blender. It can be complex, it can be simple, it can be quite literally anything. There's a very simple process that you should be using. Way too many people overcomplicate it, so let's hop right into the video. Before we get started, if you want to learn hard surface modeling in Blender in under 14 days, just like thousands of our previous students have done here, definitely check out our hard surface accelerator program in the link below. This will teach you everything from the basics of Blender to the modeling workflows to design, portfolio presentation, literally everything you need to know about hard surface modeling in Blender in under 14 days. So I'll link that program in the description if you're interested. So before we do any sort of render, what we actually need to do is we need to set up some sort of rendering environment, right? So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use something called an HDRI. Now this is basically an image that was taken in real life that we put inside of the Blender scene to mimic that realistic lighting. So you don't need any sort of complex lighting setup. You need one single HDRI, that's it. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna to go to this button, we're gonna to go to environment texture, and then we're gonna click on open and just load in an HDRI. Now, I personally get my HDRIs from polyhaven.com. I'm not associated with them. It's just the website that I use, and the HDRIs over there are free. The one I would recommend, you can just search it, and I'll link it below as well, is called the Abandoned Slipway HDRI. The reason I use this is because it's a very neutral overcast lighting. This is all you need in 90% of situations. Do not overcomplicate it. We're going to load this in. And now if we go up here to cycles and make sure you're set to cycles right here, you're gonna see we have our lighting set up, okay? It's really that simple, I promise you. So you're gonna see that this is basically an image taken from real life, added into Blender in the same exact lighting effects you would have in this exact environment in real life are added to the scene. It's super powerful, this is why I always recommend aged your eyes over some sort of artificial lighting, okay? So you're gonna see that the lighting is more or less, you know, coming from this direction. And over here, it's a little bit darker. You know, you have some darker clouds. Uh, over here, it's a bit darker as well because some of the light's getting blocked by this wall. But just intuitively looking at the scene, you can see a lot of the light is coming from this direction. And we can use this to our advantage. So how about we set up just a basic backdrop here. So whenever I'm doing my renders, all I do is after I add in the HDRI, I press Shift A, I go to Mesh, I add in a plane, and we can just move this plane down to the bottom just below the object there. Then we can just scale this up, just kind of arbitrarily for right now. And just like that, we have just a, a basic floor and a basic object, okay? Now, one thing I would recommend doing, especially if you're new to rendering or you don't really understand it fully, maybe you're not super confident in this area, I would start with a very simple infinite backdrop. This is the easiest way to go and it's gonna get you results better than most people, okay? So the way we do this is we basically take one of these edges here we can extend it back a bit just like this. And then all we do is we extrude it with the E key. We'll just go this way. And then we just kind of move this up on the Z axis. And then what we can do is scale this a bit on the Y like that. And then all you need to do is select this edge and then just bevel it. Now, this might need to be a little bit higher. It doesn't really matter too much. But the important part here is we add in a bevel with a lot of segments, okay? And then we can go into object mode and just shade that smooth. Maybe extend this edge out a bit. And this is basically what photographers would use in a situation like this. It's an infinite backdrop, so you have a lot of attention on the object. So at this point, what we can do is we can just quickly set up some basic materials. Uh, I'll let you do this on your own. Just to save time, you can either use a Blender material or you could use our Material Works plugin and actually get, you know, like a proper floor. So let's go up here to, maybe we could use like a, like a metal, that could be cool. And we could just add in some sort of floor here. Apply the scale as well, there we go. And then for the object, I'm just gonna, 
I don't know, just add some aluminum or something. We'll go in here, we'll add in a bevel, just like that. And then this could do for right now. So now once you add your materials, obviously the lighting is gonna look a little bit different because different types of materials absorb lighting in different ways. If a material is darker or brighter or in between, you're gonna have different effects on how the scene looks. But the cool part here is you can see that the right side of the object is pretty much lit up and the left side is dark. And once again, the reason that's happening is very obvious. It's simply brighter. The light's coming from this direction and it's also darker in this side. So intuitively speaking, this area should be a little bit brighter, right? It's very, very simple, guys. Do not overcomplicate this process. Now what we need to do is once we have the basic setup, we don't need to get crazy with it. All we need to do is just add in a camera and we're gonna do all the adjustments we need within that camera, okay? So I'm gonna press Shift A, we're gonna go to camera. Now, a lot of people don't understand how to use the focal length. So what I'm gonna do is go up here to view, align view, and then align active camera to view. 50 millimeters is more of a like perspective. It's kind of what you're gonna see in the default blender scene. Whereas if you go to like 75, it's gonna be more orthographic. Or if you go to like 135, it's gonna be even more orthographic. So it kind of depends on the render you're going for. A good rule of thumb is, you know, somewhere between 50 and like 135 is okay. Uh, but the higher this focal length, the more orthographic the scene's gonna look. So I'm just gonna use like a 135 millimeter. And this is a good go-to, especially if you're still learning. Just use this as like a default. Now, if you wanna move the camera back, press G and then double tap the Z key. And we're just gonna move this back. Click and then we can just zoom in a little bit, okay? And now we just grab it and we just kind of position it wherever we think would look good, okay? So we can just kind of go in this direction. And if you don't like seeing the outside of the camera, you can actually go in here, click on the render region button, and you can only see what's actually gonna be seen in the render, okay? So already you can see we have a much better lighting setup than like 99% of people. Like I'll pop up some of my old renders on the screen. I just had no clue what I was doing with lighting. You don't need a million lights in this scene. Like I'll see people, but they'll add in like 20 different lights with no clue what they're doing. All you need guys is just an HDRI. Now, if you ever need to go back into camera view, you can just press zero on the number pad and that'll take you back in. So at this point, we have a pretty clean basic render that pretty much anyone can create. Now we need to make some adjustments within the actual scene. So for example, you could select the cube and maybe you could rotate this on the Z axis, find some different positionings, see you know which way looks good to you, right? In terms of composition, like in this example, you can see this is about as even as this side here. Sometimes I like to keep it a little bit biased so we kind of have a bit more dynamic elements in the scene. So maybe this face is a bit longer than this one here. That can make your renders look a lot more dynamic as well. Another thing I see people do is they zoom in the camera too much. So it's like very claustrophobic. Don't do that. Something like this is okay. And also don't zoom out too far. It's a very simple fix. Just, you know, use your intuition here. You can kind of feel it out more or less. Now, if you want to increase the brightness of the scene, you can do this by going to the world panel and you can make the strength like 1.2, 1.3, whatever. I would not crank this up very high. I would crank it up very slightly. And then if you need to make it any brighter, you can always do that in post-processing. But, you know, 1.2 in the strength is okay here. It's a little bit brighter and just looks a bit better. Now, another thing we could do is we could take this floor and maybe rotate it a bit on the Z axis. Notice that it's kind of linear. It's like you can see this texture going in one direction. We can kind of make this look a bit better by just rotating the floor. And now we don't have this like linear, like straight line effect going on. Now it just kind of seems a bit more uh, calming in the scene. And then I'm just gonna move this floor up just a little bit here. And my favorite hack is you can actually turn off the overlays and select objects that way just to see what's going on. And at this point we have a pretty basic 
uh, rendering setup. It's really that simple. And notice how different elements within the scene. For example, if I like add in a bevel, notice how this beveled element actually captures the light even better. So it's not only the light, it's also the shapes and the designs and the angles of your models that will make the scene look different. It's not always just the lighting. Notice how if I add in a bevel, you know, it looks a bit different, right? So I'm just gonna keep that default set up like we have before, it looks pretty cool. Now, I think this left side is a little bit too dark. Now, what a lot of people do, and this is just, it's a complete beginner's mistake. I used to do this as well. They'll take like a, I don't know, like a, an area light, for example, and then they'll rotate it. So that way it's like facing, you know, this area. They'll scale it up. I see this all the time. And then they'll go in here, they'll increase the power, and they'll, that's how they'll do their lighting. Do not do this. Like, just don't do this. Use something called a reflector instead. It's gonna look a lot more soft and it has more control. The way we do this is we add in a plane. We take this plane, we move it back, we rotate it a bit, we just scale it up, just like that. And then what we can do is we can just make a new material, make the roughness set to one, just make it purely white. And then what you can actually do is you can use this reflector here to, uh, you know, soften that a bit, okay? Sometimes you might want to go into the top view and just kind of change the angles and position. And notice how if I move it closer, it's brighter. If I move it back, it's a little bit softer and it kind of, it's not so heavy. Now, if I delete this, you can see it goes from dark. And then if I undo that, it goes back to this like brighter element. So I could either move this back even further. So I could just move it back this way, right? Now it's a little bit better. Or what I could do is I could actually take this color and just make it a bit darker as well. That'll just um, give you a little bit more control. Now in this case, I think it actually looks better to keep that set to white and to simply move this back just so that way the, um, the effect isn't so heavy. So you can see that just kind of brightens things up a bit. It's very subtle, but it does look a little bit better. Again, that's the before and that's the after and you can just kind of move this around and see what you like. And at this point, the final thing you need to do before completing your render is you need to consider what you're gonna do in post-processing. A lot of people, they wanna put their name or they wanna put their logo or they wanna put their brand or some text. You need to make sure you leave space in the scene to do that. So over here, you know, I have a lot of empty space. I could put a logo up here. I could put some branding down here. Uh, I could do pretty much anything. And this is a very, very powerful effect. Instead of centering this in the scene, you kind of give, you know, this area, this area is kind of your face and you have breathing space here on the right. It's a very simple setup and it also gives you room to make some adjustments in post-processing. So I'm just gonna slightly move this camera just a bit more. And this is a pretty simple rendering setup that anybody can do at any point in time. This rendering setup is timeless. It's it's so simple. You use one HDRI, maybe a reflector or two, and you just use some basic elements of composition and just some common sense. And you're gonna have renders that look better than 99% of people. I don't understand like why people don't do this more often. I just think they don't understand how it all works. But now you do, so there's no excuse. This is how you should be doing your renders. So at this point, you can choose your resolution. So 16 by nine, I'll just do 2560 by 1440. I usually render as a TIFF, 16 bits is fine. And you don't really need to do anything else here at this point. You would just go up here to render, click on render image, and then save it. Bring it into Photoshop if you want, and that's really all you have to do. Now again, if you want to learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow in under 14 days, so modeling, design, rendering, lighting, portfolio, literally everything completely from scratch, then definitely check out our Hard Surface Accelerator program in the link below. Guys, thousands of students are getting crazy results, okay? Like you can get the same exact result as our students here inside this program and learn Blender very, very quickly and efficiently. So I'll link the Hard Surface Accelerator in the description below if you're interested. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope this was useful, and I'll see you in the next one.